<clears throat> Welcome back to Knox Locks. Sorry, it's uh, been a while. But uh, it's time to make Joe Picks his uh, challenge locks from winning my Knox Locks, uh, the Lock 3 giveaway. So I got a couple in front of me today as far as <clears throat> the ones I had custom made for Knoxtober. So that's probably the one I'm going to end up modifying today. And then that's Joe's uh, birthday present. And then coming in late, obviously. And then the one um, he had asked for. Hold on. There you go. Oh, wait a minute. Was it pro? A normal 90A. I guess around here somewhere. Here it is. So that's a regular. Oh, that one's a pro too. Hold on. Anyway, a regular 90A, uncorrupted, uh, you know, no mods, no nothing. It, don't want to break my chest before. So anyways, <clears throat> today, let's see, I want to make sure I got the right, yep, bidding for this. The reason why I'm picking something so low as far as bidding i to check that guy out. <laughs> but uh, I'll show you the plans for the challenge lock in a second. Let's see. Okay. So I understand this looks like gibberish. But, uh... <clears throat> so for the plug, uh, I do have a couple trap pins in here that I'll show you on my table in a minute. So uh, I have a spool in one, and then the zigzags are just shorthand for serration. The T's are for the trap pins. I have one in chamber three and seven. Uh, in the Bible, I'm leaving four, chamber four, a question mark, because uh, I want to see how the trap pin configuration turns out. I want to make sure I don't take off too much metal. You know what I mean? So that... Uh, it goes into the next chamber. So uh, we're going to play what happens on top of four by ear. But the tools we're going to be using today are... <clears throat> I have a simple bought off eBay uh, knockoff Dremel tool. Okay. Um, that's going to be doing most of the drill mods. And then for the serrations, I have... Let's see, I believe for the 98 Pro, I'm going to need the 3.5 millimeter cap, if I'm not mistaken. And of course, the T handle the, for the tap. And I got my voice and everything off, off camera to the side that you'll see in a little bit. But yeah, this is going to be a slow video. Um, I just had a lot going on between being sick myself and uh, having a death in the family. <clears throat> so I'm just really going to take my time pulling this lock together. So uh, <clears throat> forgive me if I don't uh, respond right away to, uh, you know, if there's any comments or something i'm mean, gonna try to pay attention honestly best i can but let's see i'm looking for all my uh my proper tips on see okay there's the one i'm gonna use for today for most of it anyways this is technically i'd say it's for um for drilling kind of like a the jewelry tip it's not the engraver. It's not. It's not coming in clear enough, because there's an engraving tip that's all. Um, the, the engraving one is this one. They both have a ball tip, but this one's more like sandpaper, where this one's more like a, more like a drill bit. I don't know if you could see that next to each other. But anyways, you want to use the one that's like a drill bit. So uh, that's a tip we're going to be using. I'm just prepping the uh, the Dremel for when we need it. <clears throat> I 
Okay. So, uh, this time we're going to be, for John Locke, I made his out of a 90A, and um, that forces me to use uh, American Lock style pins. So I'm happy that with the 90A Pro here, I can actually use full-size pins. I've got some pins from DMAC that I'm actually going to put into this guy. Uh, I've been waiting for the proper occasion, and this definitely seems like it. And again, the bidding or the reason for the bidding on this, it's all very low cuts. And that's so that the serration and the spools can go deep into the chamber. And then you'll when you see the traps, you'll understand a little better. So now let's start taking this guy apart, right? <clears throat> Hope everyone's had a good weekend. <clears throat> Let's see, where's my I just had my Allen keys right in front of me a minute ago. How is this not the right proper size? Let's see. Okay, not even 10 minutes in, and I already got my first beer right back. All right, gotta go get my backup Allen keys. Okay. Get my folding one. I don't know why that's not the right T handle up there. I don't remember changing it. <clears throat> okay, there we go. We're going to take the Retaining screw out. There we go. I just felt the, uh, there you go, casing fall down. So now this is a key retaining lock. So you have to close the shackle to, there you go. So now the lock is removed. everything right there as far as the lock the retaining screws and pins and to clear off these other pack locks so I make room we're only working on one by the way oh let me before I forget and get a uh, lost in the the process here uh, the free sticker aspect of it all right, so these are stickers that I had that uh, normally if you win, I'd give them, uh, you know, with whatever you want. But uh, in my absence, it's been a while and I've had a stockpile. So uh, if you want a free sticker, you know, free sticker pack or whatever, all you have to do is email me at uh, locksfornox at gmail.com. It's all up top. I'll focus on that in a minute. Also, it's in my description. Uh, so that's the... Uh, banner one that's the one I had for for Halloween that's my favorite Halloween one <laughs> and then the uh the background one there so yeah free stickers man you want free stickers just gotta hit me with an email to tell me where I'm sending them that's all back to the lock
Let's see. Today I'll be using. I use two sets of tweezers. Technically, I use uh, sparrows for the uh, the pin work, and then off of eBay, they're cheap, man, like two bucks. These uh for the springs. And you'll see why these are not necessary, just convenient. I guess would be the more uh, appropriate word. Good old goat wrench. <laughs> I like with uh, how that has the little concealment spot behind there. Okay, let's see if I can do this without gouging myself. There we go. And actually, you know what? I got some pins here. I should move out of the way just so they don't get in confusion. Wait till you see some of these pins DMAC made, man. I'm not going to put any rattlesnakes in here. I only have two rattlesnakes. I know they're both for me to learn from. <laughs> but uh, some of the other ones he created are still far out spools. And uh, this seems like an appropriate lock. <clears throat> okay, I'm using one of the mini uh, pinning pads that I give away. Obviously, in my giveaways, uh, I prefer these from Sparrows. I mean, if you see kind of the way I'm I'm working over here, I tend to put the big parts, uh, you know, the screws and the whatnots, uh, all on one, the big Sparrows, and then for the pins, I just like the. It's technically floor tiling, but I like the way it uh, handles the pins and just uh, makes it easier to handle overall. Oh yeah, Jay Gabriel's are awesome. I would love, <laughs> I would love some rattlesnakes, man. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna show them in a second uh, once I take this apart. When um, I guess wow, it's almost a year ago now. I was one um D Max um. A pick giveaway and I was he was nice enough to include two uh, rattlesnakes and I <laughs> I don't want to damage them and break them you know what I mean in an attempt to learn how to make them so that, that's why you know I don't want to mess up something you know mess up a good thing okay there's gonna be a small size follower and obviously I gotta turn that another way Let's see. No, hold on. Where's my shim? At? It's been a minute, and there's no point in having shims if you're not going to use them, right? <laughs> No need for everything to explode all over the place. Well, I do have everything organized pretty good. It's just a matter of finding what it is I'm looking for. <laughs> Well, it's, it's finally off oh, since the last just a check-in i finally able to put together this acid i've had for forever unfortunately none of the pins are actually acid but uh i was able to find a nasty looking c-clip just to hold it all together so i mean it is a complete one just it doesn't have any proper <laughs> acid you know gin bottles or spools or nothing cool like that but uh yeah that was part of the bosnian bill or so-called bosnian bill purchase thing that i got off of ebay Zion Labs and Bosnian and Bill. Man, I'll take these apart just to see what's inside of them. I've been curious and they're beyond my my picking ability. 
I mean, obviously you buy anything on eBay, how much can you trust where it comes from, but it was enough to pique my curiosity. Here's the shims. I knew they were here. They couldn't have gone too far. <clears throat> this is actually my first time working with the 90A Pro as far as uh, fully gutting it. I've done the 90A multiple times and uh, the American Lock 1100 and the uh, 52. But, uh, <clears throat> but the 90A just has that wider, or the 90A Pro rather, just has that wider diameter that keeps it on like a sledge. Uh, level scale you know what I mean so the pin diameter I could use the normal pins as opposed to the American lock Okay, hard parts over, <laughs> but one of the hard parts. Okay, step one, dissection. So we've got the Bible, with the plug follower. I'm gonna keep that there. Okay, we'll let the shim hang out for later. Now let's see what uh, I'm curious what pack lock sent just stockwise. They have a uniform. I've never... Hold on. I'm going to grab my flashlight for this. Maybe this is something exclusive to the 90A Pro. That's not in the 90A, but I've never seen a cross. Oh yeah, no, that's, that's, I try to keep my pins in line, you're good, but what's, if you look, I've never noticed, hold on, I gotta come from the under approach here, uh, at least for me, I've never seen that purple and blue color coding, so, um, let me see if I can stop the letters in the background, if you look, it's literally blue, purple, blue, blue, purple, like it's an alternating, in my 90As, I've never had a, a color coding like that. So that's cool. I mean, <clears throat> again, maybe that's something unique to the to the Pro Series. I'm not sure. Let's see. Chamber 1. Oh, yeah, wow, that's dark. Okay. There's that dark blue metal. And that purple, I could see some type of serration on it. Okay. Yeah, so you could tell already just in the first two pins that there's a higher level of security than the um, 90A. So far, every one I've pulled out has that little serration on the top. So the 90A is trying to... Yeah, see, that's, I, I only taken apart J, uh, the the 90A, so I, I know for a fact that the ones that I had weren't color-coded, but, I mean, I wonder if these are just, uh, you know, like, to the bidding, maybe so it makes it easier to assemble. Because uh, it, it took me, actually, part of the reason my Noxtober didn't go off, I wanted to you know, kind of do this for Halloween was they had a backup at pack lock. I, I literally didn't get the locks, even though they were ordered in September. Um, uh, Martha there wasn't able to find people to key the locks up. So I didn't get them till like the, whoop, all right, I had to get these in order here. I didn't get them till the 30th. So to actually have them in my hands on the 30th, is hard to say, you know, the next day, 
and I didn't really want to fully hype them up when I didn't have, you know, said locks in hand. But we're doing, okay. So that's the key pins. I'm going to show you them in a second. <clears throat> or a closer look at them. And you can see there's definitely a higher level of security here. Is that even just on a general level? Let's see if my flashlight will come into play. Take the under approach again. Just want to make sure I don't spill them all over the place. Oh, I see. So the tapered effect. Okay. So that's unfortunate. I'm not too familiar with it. I could see what you're talking about. The tapers at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, well, each one does have a little serration on it, though. Yeah, much better. Um, I could see how it would be more difficult to pick already just based on the pins. Meaning if you took the same pins and put them in a 90A, I could see how that would already make it more difficult. Hmm. Okay, so now these are the key pins I'm working with. And now here's the plan that I had for the uh, to change out the Bible. And this is where it might get a little tricky. I got to make sure things line up. Uh, let's see. Since these, all these key pins already have serrations on the top technically that would make it a little easier for let's see chambers six five and two because if i'm going to serrate the top of them anyways to have serrated bottom pins and, you know, that's just kind of helping my cause already Okay, uh, next step. Let's see what we have in the Bible. <clears throat> uh, here's a little, uh, I guess, pro tip, just in case you ever mix up which end of, um, of a, like a kick cylinder kind of thing like this is the front or the back. I actually learned this from Cranky Lockpicker. He dropped this as a tip in one of his videos. The side right here with the indent, that's going to be your front. So that's where you pulled the plug out of. You know what I'm saying? So the follower would have came through that way. Just in case you ever put it down, you forget which way, uh, you know, you pulled it through. <clears throat> Let's see. Where's my tweezers? Tweezers, tweezers, tweezers. Let's see. I got the important ones for the springs for later. Are you couldn't. Let me put my own keys away before I lose these. That's the last thing you need. Springs going everywhere. <laughs> hmm. I swear sometimes the things had teeth, they'd bite me. <laughs> hmm. How is it not in the spot? All right, so we're going with the backup pin and tweezers. Let's see what case I happen to have these stashed away. Luckily, everything here is Sparrow, so it's easy to just take it apart where I don't have, you know, all like Peterson's and uh, Law Lock. I don't have all that stuff around my pinning tray too much. I mean, those are for picking, not so much pinning. So pinning all my stuff is pretty much Sparrow's or from Lab or something to that effect. <clears throat> Here's a cool little uh, pinning tray. John Locke was cool enough to send to me. With the when he, uh, he sent me this uh, his pack lock. 
It was nice enough to send me a, a pin in tray and then a, a bigger, like, uh, magnet travel size one. So that's cool. You know, you can line up what you wanted to have as far as rows or whatever. And it has the magnetic thing. So, you know, again, thanks, Sean. As you can see, I put some use to it. It was fun. I guess you guys could probably see what I even can't see because I'm not looking through the lens. Like, Nox, they're right there. They're right there. How do you not see them? Well, I don't understand. I'm looking for my backup. I got like five backup pairs. I don't see them either. That's what I'm wondering about. Okay, I'm gonna have to do them all with the sharp ones. I hate doing this. Okay, back up tweezers of this. Okay, chamber number one. <clears throat> See the first chamber serrated. Little tiny serrated guy too. Let's see, dude. Chamber two is a spool. Okay, number three is a spool. Okay, that guy's a spool. Serrated. Yep. The next spring. Yeah. Springs right there. I got it. Okay, I'm gonna push the follower through so I can catch it from the other side now. Okay, that one's serrated as well. Chamber seven. Chamber six, that's a small spool. Hopefully I'm gonna replace that or be able to replace that. I gotta see if there's enough room in the uh in the chambers for the pins I'm planning on putting in here. Okay, should be the last guy. And that looks serrated, okay. All 
That's it. Let me give you a close-up zoom of what Packlock sends. Uh, there's my email address again. You want the free stickers? Just locksornoxgmail.com. But uh, here I want to get my flashlight. Give you a little better shot. So that's standard. Yeah, thanks, Jay. That'd be awesome, man. <laughs> you can see the difference between the... Hold on, let me fix the spool in the second chamber there. We can, uh... Okay, there you go. So you can see the difference as far as the... The serrations are only on the top. They're not really on the whole pin. They only have like two little ribs. And uh, let's see that end one actually with a closer look on it doesn't even have. I mean, there's the two little serrations on the top, but like, they're really not deep. Now, I'd like to show you the pins I'm going to hopefully be replacing them with. That, uh, hey, Joe Picks. Yeah, butter. Okay, these are, uh, probably about half of these here are courtesy of DMAC. Okay. Oh, whatever. <laughs> you could surprise me on that one, man. That's... Okay, so now, out of the lot that I have from DMAC... I get these babies front and center over here. Whew, see, I don't know how you guys do that pin-on-pin pin work, man. Like that pin and pin my god, like that is such precision, it's crazy. Okay, so what I was thinking about throwing in here, again, I'm looking at diameters. I don't think, let me see if these big guys, for some reason they seem a little wide, okay. I have to bust out the, um, Oh, here's hold on. I'll show you some of the, the rattlesnakes. I'll put them front. Let's see. That's one of them right here. And then uh, for my uh, pressure luck one, that's I don't need those T pins. Oh, I could only imagine challenge locks lair, dude. Who? <laughs> yeah. There's some wicked work in there. All right, let's see if this serrated pin. Come over. Yeah, see, I don't know. These three millimeter pins are looking a little chunky when I put them next to the uh, the pack lock ones. I mean, they really look chunky. I'm gonna have to pull out the micrometer over here just to make sure. Um, huh. All right, I do still have some in the two millimeter variety, just in case that it does come down to that. Let's see, I wanted to put a bigger spool, because I really want to bite on that. So you can see the difference in the size of the spools I'm trying to work with and the spools that come standard. So like you, you, I can get a much deeper bite into a full set with that size, you know, that size spool as opposed to, you know, that doesn't have much room to, to really grab in the core when it's when it's turning. Okay, uh, let's. See, I guess that means busting out the micrometer. One second. That's my little picture. I in front of the camera. This is what I really use. Well, not so much this round 
thing. But that's more of a weight to keep the tray anchored. But like as far as my picking, I'm I'm really use yeah you know, all sorts of stuff just in front of me. <clears throat> I don't really have. I mean, I do have a pouch that I throw things in when I travel. You know, like I'm going around, or whatever. But most of my stuff's just sitting here, semi organized. Everything has a spot. It's just unfortunately always putting it back to that spot and then getting a little overcrowded see here's my proper pin and tweezers can't go far when you don't leave right <laughs> uh let's see i gotta throw this thing away this was the huck set that you're gonna see parts of um parts of it that i got i'm gonna use today when i do the uh serrating I'm going to use that to hold the core, but the rest of this kit, at least this version, I've seen much better versions out there. I got this off of, um, AliExpress, but it, it's just, it was cheap, man. Like I me, mean, like I, I already ripped off all the stuff on here. I did a, a little review on this. All right. Back up pin and tweeters. Here you go. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I didn't care for this particular one. I've seen much better, same you know advertised by huck but uh this one came real cheap quality and uh, it had like a top layer of fake leather i guess or pleather or whatever you want to call it that just got everything all tangled up it was i don't know but in hindsight for 10 bucks i got the core holders that i need for you know for the core mods so it's a give and a take i guess you know let's see micrometer micrometer Oh, that's a bump hammer. Okay, here we go. My crummer. Caliber. So I know I have a little wiggle room to work with, but uh, when you see the two trap uh, pins I plan on setting up, I can't afford to drill into the side chambers or else you know i'm going to tap into the chamber next to it and ruin the whole lock and you know it's no good and i always take the the battery out of this just because it's very rare that i use it it's normally when i'm either shaving down picks or when picks first get here that I'm checking out their thicknesses from the factory made and from uh, from the factory made and making sure that they're what they're supposed to be. Okay, zero this guy. Okay. Okay, zero. Now, here's the standard. Are they going to grab it off the board? Is 2.33 for the pack lock. And the lock or the pins I want to replace. Ooh, 2.98. So, assuming if that's a three millimeter hole, yikes, that's going to be close. And the only reason I say that is because that's a spooled uh a multi-spooled kind of almost like a scallop uh approach on that so that's all right that might not be an ideal one um let's see maybe instead see what i wanted to do uh let's see with this guy here we see it's very long with lots of Almost reminds me of like a Christmas tree from the Sparrows uh, Christmas set or the Scrooge set. It's kind of something like that. Uh, I just wanted to give you multiple, you know, chances to get caught up. So let's see if that's not going to be the one. Let's see. Let's see what Madame Ruby sees. That's from... Uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See the, I think the diameter on that's already smaller. I'm just grabbing a mushroom pin. These are, I'm kind of resorting to a couple stock um, sparrows 
for a second here. I just want to see diameter wise, make sure that three millimeter is exactly what I, you know, am working with and can get away with. And uh, I want to use a couple that I, I have a torpedo one here at the Mac made. And let's see. This is a beautiful rattlesnake. This is probably out of the, the two that I have. This is probably the, the nicer of the two. I mean that the, uh, the things move a lot more fluently on there. Um, but yeah, that, that, that jiggling guy, I think that would serve him right for this, for this lock. I hate to let him go, but yeah, I would appreciate it, man. I'd, like I said, I only have these two that DMAC was nice enough to grace, uh, grace me with, but that pin and pin work, dude, that's way too, <laughs> too intricate for my hands. I don't know how you get, even with a guide, you know what I'm saying? Even with a, okay, that's a little thinner than the, than that paper. You know, even with a proper guide and a stand still, that's, you know, not even millimeter, thousands of a millimeter off and it doesn't, you know, it's not a straight line and doesn't allow that. My hands just aren't, aren't there yet. And now I'm going to throw one of these guys in there just to make you scratch your head. What the hell am I picking at? And that's it. That's the classic dog tag chain thing. And when I put that in there, I think I have a a, a better piece I'm going to use. That's going to get caught up in the, the V-shaped trap that I'm going to cut into the core. All right. I wanted to see if I could replace a couple of these key pins here. Oh my God, piston ones, dude. The piston pins are next level, dude. <laughs> when I saw those, I was like, are you kidding me? I don't even know how you haven't, or, you know, how you can actually successfully pick that. Like, it was just with the way it rotates, you know, literally like a piston on a car. It's like, oh man, dude, like it resists your efforts of pressure. But let's see, I want to see if I could possibly replace some of these key pins here. Again, that's why I got the uh, micrometer out. And I also, I mean, for cheating purposes, I could always just try to slide it into there real quick and make sure it's, I mean, each one of these does have a little, little serration on them here. Let me turn them around so they're at least all right. Okay. So let's see, where's my... I wanted to start off. I know I at least need to keep one, one thing stable. So I just I got a spool in the front. The zigzag just means serrated, and then when you see those T's, that's where the trap pins are. And again, I just call them. Uh, oh, hey, Chris Capone, what's happening, man? Welcome. Good to see you. Oh, actually, Chris, I'm happy you're here. Only in the sense that I was able to acquire uh, through a friend um, actual windshield wiper thing. So I can, I'm going to attempt to try to recreate your double ended tension turner out of one of the, you know, a full one. You know what I mean? Not just, I had a couple of small, uh, you know, like bought from sparrow size ones, but like I would like to show, you know, proper wise from an actual windshield wiper insert. I just uh, procured that a couple of days ago. But yeah, I think I'm gonna have to check out the micrometer to see if uh, the width of this uh, torpedo is gonna fit in there. And then, um, like I said, I wanna do the dog tags for chamber, I'm sorry, chamber three and seven. My idea behind seven is you're really gonna have to, oh, so um, let me slide that. That's your pin configuration so far. Uh, you're really going to have to watch, uh, you know, when you're picking for that, that last chamber seven, those things are going to slide and catch like crazy. Oh, I want to knock the key pin upside down.
There you go. Okay. We're coming together. We're coming together. Before I, uh, you know, actually start drilling or cutting into the core or, you know, doing any types of mods, I always just lay out. I mean, it's probably idiot 101, but I just make sure I lay out all the pins that I'm doing so I know exactly, you know, in case I lose my step or, you know, hey, what was I doing again or what should I do next? It, boom, it's laid out right in front of me. There's no, you know, real confusion there. Uh, let's see. I need some serrations for the tops. Okay. Let's see something good serrated. Let's see if this guy will work. Again, when you see some of these things that, that DMAC made on these, they're phenomenal. Hold on. Wait a minute. Uh, this one. Oh, hold on. That one's a chest pin. My bad. My bad. <laughs> um. There's a spool that he made. Where is it? Okay, hold on. I got it in chamber one already. This one spool combined with the dog tag links that he sent me are kind of the, the anchor, I guess, or the challenge behind the lock. And then to fill in the voids, you know, if, if you just had all spools, the core would shift and it would be, you know, uh, unstable lock. So for the chambers two, and again, I'm going to see how the drilling goes uh, before I go crazy with the ones next to the trap pins. I mean, seven's isolated a little more, but uh, for number four there, that's going to be a little, I don't, you know, I don't want to cut too far into the sides of the next. So I'm going to get these serrated out of there. I know the dog tag chains will fit. I'm just not too positive about the um, the serrated homemade, so I have to check them out for a second. Oh yeah, the the chain's very frustrating. Uh, two exam uh, for two reasons. One, I'll show you how it catches in the lock, and then two, as you're trying to push it up with the pick, how it slips. So like it's a double angle. I learned this, that's, I always love to shout out where I learned the technique I'm about to show you. And uh, what I'm about to de demonstrate um, where I learned the, um, he didn't use dog tag chains and he used spool pins, but it was dark arts lock picking. Awesome dude. <laughs> uh, it was dark arts lock picking and it's on Bosnian Bills. Uh, let's see, I wanna try to remember the name of the video cause I watched the damn thing 500 times. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it, the point is, uh, it's very, the more the trap of this, I mean, I don't want to give it all away, but the point is most people have very hard on their tension and the harder you tension, the, dig, the more you dig yourself into a trap. So it's almost like having a tire stuck in the mud. Like the more you accelerate, the more you're getting yourself trapped. And that's what I love about it. Okay, I know it's not the Sherlock, so then maybe it's the elementary. I know it's not the Sherlock. I remember the Sherlock one. It had the pipe down the side of it. I remember that one. Okay, so then maybe it's not that. Uh, but I know for sure, 110%, it was Dark Arts Lockpick in that, uh, who did that mod for Bosnian Bill. And uh, what, what picks that out, or, or stamps that in my mind, Bosnian Bill uh, gave him the pack lock for stumping him, you know, for the whipped. So we whipped by Dark Arts lock picking, and he's like, this is the last one I'm giving out for quote-unquote trap pins, and because he literally got the core trapped. So I guess the tension of the springs pushed the uh, the dog tag against, so we had to, you know, off-camera beat it on, on the thing to, to unjam it. So <laughs> that one, when I saw that one, I was like, ooh, that's, that's, that's kind of interesting. Oh, Corbin does too. Okay, see, I, I, I think that approach from a picking standpoint i mean the the more rounded material round on round you have the less you know kinetic energy straight up as you know if you're picking the lock you know, if you have all flat surfaces it's going to be easier to rise when you have round it could roll you know side to side i mean even though the chamber is keeping them in line you know it, it gives you a little more wriggle wiggle room 
So that's why, like, to me, who I was surprised, very surprised, my lock, when I made him um, the twin version of this one, um, yeah, it's a D200, that, that I, that's where the first time I, I practiced this little trap at, and my lock picked it like that, and he did so, uh, talking to him with feather light tension he i was expecting him you know just like everyone else to go in there hard crank it and get he's like watching it like, how'd you pick that so fast and he's like, oh dude feather light tension and i was like wow like i was really surprised and then even in um john locks when john uh did get it open again he, i sent it to him blind so he didn't know that was in there uh the bottom one had popped off so, I mean, if you're cranking tension and then you just feel it, oh, I got to open, you wouldn't know that, you know, you popped it. So, I'm just saying that was that was my first attempt was with John. And then just seeing how Mylock was able to do it with uh, very, very, um, I really used two, two millimeter. Okay. So, I, I want to start experimenting with that. I have, um, keep uh you know like blanks for picks but i don't have pin making material like you know the two millimeter or three millimeter rod that's i'm trying to work my way up for the lpu where i'm going to be needing to make my own pins for the challenge locks for uh what did that i think blue belt right i'm pretty sure uh, anyway so let's continue a little here uh so i don't feel that these serrations for the top are quite good enough you know i want something a little sharper a little uh i just want to try hopefully this big one will fit so let's see i need one more serrated from over here let's see be this guy Yeah, that's not too bad. Not too shabby. Coming together. I just need chamber two here. Something with a little better bite. Okay, hold on a spool. All right, I need one more serrated. And this will be the final pin. You know what? This guy looks like a monster right here. Look at this thing. Ooh, baby. That thing is sharp. That thing is sharp. All right. I'm pretty sure. I just want to check with the micrometer real quick or with the chain. Make sure that that fully fits in. That's the only pin I'm a little worried about. And we'll start doing some, uh, some core mods. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, I like that. I'm looking at this pin in particular. I like how in the middle of it. It almost has that spool effect so it can get caught in it but at the same time there's serrations on the top and bottom so you'll feel a couple uh a couple clicks and then all of a sudden you know like a false set in the middle of that so i, I kind of like that one and this guy this is kind of like a double spool with uh actually looks better when i pull it out for some reason but every one of the humps there has a serrations all lacerated in it and then even for the um dog tag chains i think this is a 2.5 millimeter and this is a three so they'll even have different feels you know in the chamber when you're picking them i'm trying to just vary things as much as possible you know okay let's uh start getting some modern going <clears throat> Okay, to hold uh, my core, let's see, I'm going to be using a thing from the Huck set. No, 
that on. Okay. Again, as much as my Huck set that I said was horrible, and to me, honestly, this whole thing was kind of like crap, but uh, which I call it? To me, it was still it was ten bucks, dude. Ten bucks, just the the plug holders alone, five dollars each, right there. To me, it was worth the ten bucks. Plus, it comes with tweezers and pliers and whatnot. So I'd still buy it. AliExpress. There you go. <laughs> okay. So again, just I guess a, a little bit of a rookie move, but just to make sure that I don't mess it up in the long run. <clears throat> now that I got all my pins lined up, I'm gonna discard all the pins I'm not using, just so that you know something doesn't make its way in, and all of a sudden I, I lose track, I lose you know where did this go, where did this come from. So there honestly is a big privilege to keeping your workplace clean. I had to learn that the hard way. But uh, yeah, as long as that one nasty pin up there, that diameter fits, I think this should be a nice little uh, challenge here. You know, I'm going to keep this guy right up here on standby, just in case the other one doesn't, doesn't fit. I don't know how you guys again make any of those pin in pins, man. To work with a three millimeter and literally like drill out the middle and have is way beyond me. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay, the first thing I'm going to be doing is going to be doing a serrating. So for the actual uh, serrating part. <clears throat> I, uh, from my local hobby shop, <clears throat> they actually just, they're drilling taps, so they're meant for you to, uh, you know, drill up, drill it out and at the same time thread it so you could put a screw in, or if you had like a diameter rod that you wanted to make into a screw, uh, that was, came with that part of the kit too, back here somewhere. And then uh, separately, I had to buy from DeWalt a, a T handle just because the that kit didn't have a T handle that would fit that small of a of a diameter. <clears throat> so again, I wrote first everything down on paper, then I laid everything down right here in front of me. So you know, really, you, you don't want to get lost. I'm just saying it's. It's an easy mistake to all of a sudden you thread the wrong chamber because you th you're thinking maybe backwards in numbers or you do it. It's really easy just to get lost. Yeah, no, dude, that's why I say that too, the benefits of a clean workspace. But if you look, yeah, look how many locks and I got like three or four projects. I got pin and mats here with projects going on. I got pin and mats over here with projects going on. <laughs> I got this much room of actual working space just because everything else is side projects and locks that I'm messing around with. So <laughs> yeah, I could use a good clean in here too. But at least the one thing really, uh, this is the, early like 1920s or 30s checkerboard that or chessboard rather that uh this is made into so i haven't drilled any holes i haven't you know messed with the wood at all but this thing really stands the test of time and normally if a pin or a spring falls out it falls in between if you can see there's like a gap in between the uh, uh you know these are made out of i guess ceramic or i don't think they're real slate i'm not positive it's old maybe it's slate but uh, if it normally falls right in the crack, so it's really easy to find. You know, that's why I like about it. <clears throat> oh, you know what? Hold on. Before I even get started, let me. Well, I got my. Uh, let me let me make sure that that pin's even going to be of size. Before I go threading chambers. I want to make sure that that's at its widest. 
I don't want to pinch it in the middle of a... No, it looks like it'll be okay. 2.9. So that literally leaves me a 0.1 you know, like to slide it in a chamber. That, that should be enough to... Enough to work. Okay. So let's see. First one I'm going to serrate is chamber two. So literally, that's just going to be the. I'm working from right to left. And the one thing I like about these two is in the sense that after the first two, they're self-centering. So, I mean, as long as you have it stable and you're, you're going in straight, I'm trying to get it straight for the camera. There you go. As long as you're going in straight, the threads will be okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like self, self-aligning. At the same time, you don't want to go too deep into the lock core. <clears throat> right there it's already biting and aligning itself give it a little half a twist there you go yeah that actually looks a little tight here, let me see if, uh, here's my kicks picks. Happen to have one handy. Uh, let's see, where's my flashlight? So you can see chamber two has the threads, but it's not really pronounced. Hold on. So you can, I'm thinking about maybe going with a larger tap. I mean, if I can feel it, but it's not really, there's not a lot of bite to it. Let's see, okay, what's the next chamber I'm threading? Let's see, okay, the next one would be... Let's see, okay. I want to see what these two look like threaded together. Side by side, and then I'll decide then I might go a wider diameter for the... Um, Send it through to the first one again. Okay. <laughs> By the time we look at this here. Okay, yeah, you can definitely see that they are serrated. I mean, you can see how these two chambers right here and here are shiny compared to the darkness of every other chamber but uh <clears throat> <laughs> yeah uh where did that came from <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> the magical art lock sport leftover pieces see i don't know that's just not really biting to my satisfaction it's not really that that deep. I mean, you could see it. Okay, I have one more, and after that one, um, I'm gonna go to the uh, the trap pins and the spools counter milling part. So that's gonna be some drilling. So I'm just giving a little heads up warning as far as uh, 
noise. You know, you're listening to headphones or got this on you know, TV in your living room. I'll uh, give you another heads up before I start the drum, though, of course. And they're definitely serrated, but let's try this. There you go. Let's grab a pin. And let's see how it catches. Okay, we got this big nasty fellow. Oh yeah, see it is going to be too wide. Okay, so turns out 2.9 does not fit into the 3. Or at least not after it's been serrated anyways. So maybe that chewed up any extra room. Let's try this one. No. Normal chamber, no. Huh. Okay. Well, yeah, none, none of the three millimeter pins fit. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay, rehash the plans. I'm going to have to use all American lock pins. Luckily, I have a small stash of them. But wow, I really want... I really thought 90A Pro used full 3 millimeter. Wow. Okay. I, thought, I guess that 2.9 on top of the serration is just not enough for it to... Uh, hold on. Yeah, no, if it doesn't fit in the plug, it's not probably going to fit in the Bible either. Okay. Let's see what I have then for top serrations in two millimeter. Let's see. I'm still going to be able to do my trap ideally, just because the trap... See how that, okay, the trap pins are still able to fit the dog pan. <laughs> Use a big hammer. <laughs> okay, so as long as I still got the trap parts, I could still, I guess, be forced to use the pack lock uh, standard serrated for the top. So, wow, I really, I'm, okay, okay. I have my... The lock that I'm going to be making for Lock Pickers United, again, that's one that's going to be going to Joe Picks, is uh, the Pressure Luck lock. And that's a play on D-Max. And uh, I forget who made the original one on Bosnian Bills now, but it's um, D-Max, I believe it's called Choices. And for me, I'm going to call it Pressure Luck. <laughs> uh where uh, one side you turn is kind of easy, and then the other side you, you turn is hard. So that's where the, the choices part comes in. But I'm either going to call it no good choice, and then label one way bad and one way worse, or, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking it from the game show with the whammies. I mean, I don't know if, I guess that's probably dating my age, but when I was a kid, there was a show, Pressure Luck, and it'd be, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, Stop, whatever. And then this little red guy would come along, steal all your money. Okay, so now that I got to deal with these American lock size, the two millimeter, I got a spool for the front one. But I got to find a couple serrated now for the... Um, yeah, that does change things up. Actually, well, no, that would be three millimeters. Never mind. Okay, here's one serrated. I was thinking real quick, maybe I'd use the, from the chest pin from Sparrows, how they have this stack of um, of checkers. Uh, I was thinking about throwing that, but no, that'd be three millimeters too. So that wouldn't, no bueno. Actually, here is one. I have one right here, so we'll give it a try. Yeah, no. 
Nope, a hair too big. Literally, that's just a hair. That'd be perfect for the serrated ones. Nope, just a hair too big. Okay. Okay, so here's my two serrated. Now to start doing counter milling for the traps. Okay. And I might even cut a new piece from... Uh, just snip a new piece off of here. Maybe I'll actually put three in this instead. Being I can't use the... Um, Disserrated. Actually, that sounds like a real good idea. Okay. So I have the two serrated that came uh, stock with the pack lock. So obviously, I'm going to re put those ones back in. And then <clears throat> two of their chambers will have, or actually, no, just one of the chambers will have their style spools, and then the other three will be my trap. My trap pins. So, <clears throat> see, at this time, I guess I'd warn you for if you have anything loud going on the TV, or if you got you know headphones on, something like that. I'm about to turn the Dremel on, and uh, I'm gonna do the counter milling for the um, two trap ones, and then I'm gonna do a little bit for the spool. I don't think it's crazy loud. Mildly annoying, but we'll make quick work. Let's see. I want to try to give you some insight here what I'm doing. Now I'm going to just show you the after effect. Yeah, after the fact. So now chamber one, I'm going to do some counter milling just so that the spool uh, that they provide the small spool has a little bit of a lip to catch on to. I dig in a little bit on the left and on the right just so, you know, regardless of which way you're turning it, you got a lip in every direction. Considering it's the first, uh, first chamber, you know, I can go a little heavy-handed <laughs> as far as that front, you know, the front is nice and thick. So what we got now going on is you have <clears throat> one counter milled here, serrated, serrated, and now I'm going to do the first of the trap right here. Actually, hold on, I should, yeah, now I'm going to do the trap pins, I, four and seven now so what i do is i counter mill them first and then i'll show you the uh the other dremel piece i use to actually kind of create the trap so let's counter mill them first <clears throat> when i'm counter milling i just want to get the ball just underneath the lip so it's like you're creating a little pocket for which uh you know so when i drop the ball in there it's literally going to grab onto it so as you just push it a little bit in each direction and you see the ball literally disappear and that's just what you want right there right when it's disappearing Yeah, I'm get again in chamber seven. And I'll take a second and I'll show you with the uh, with the trap pins what that actually does before I put the traps in. <laughs> okay. So just to give you an idea. <clears throat> okay. 
Now it's not tricked out to the trap point yet, but I just want to show you what the counter milling by itself does and with these dog tags in particular. So now when you get it in there, you can literally see it go down. And then when you try to, if there's tension on the lock in any way, like the, it's preventing the balls from coming out. So that's just counter milling alone. Like I didn't even put the trap in yet. So as you can see, as I'm pulling them out, if you have any type of rotation on there, even you know, I'm pulling away from it that way, it's grabbing at each one of those. So <clears throat> I kind of, well, not kind of, I exactly picked this low key bidding just for this trap. If you see, these are all low cuts on here. And the reason why is I want, uh, once the keys be, you know, removed, I want these balls to fall as deep into the plug as possible. So this way, look at that, that's caught. Like that is caught good. Okay, so that's, I got that for number seven, six, five, four, right here for chamber four. And again, just what that counter milling does is it grabs that uh, ball bearing so as, as you're turning it with tension it just grabs right on there and bites and you'll see once I put the little trap in there that uh the dog tag's gonna fall into it's gonna be that much you know harder <clears throat> okay so in, in order to do that it's gonna swap out the um the dremel tips now Let's see. Okay, the one that I used, uh, I showed when I first started the uh, the stream, but the one I use for the counter milling is just a little ball that literally looks like a, a drill tip. But the one that I'll be using uh, this time for the trap, because I, I grounded out the one with the point, uh, but you'll see that I'm going to make a, a little trench on each side of the, um, of the chamber. It was significantly easy, easier when I had the pointed, uh, the pointed tip, but... They grind out so fast that. Okay, so now what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to show you easiest on number seven here, is that's already been counter milled circle wise. And now I'm cutting counter cross. Literally right across the, uh, the whole chamber. Again, this was a lot easier with the, uh, with the pointed gem of this. I remember when I made John's, I had done all this uh, extra work on both sides uh, of the chamber for the top. And I realized on the one I made for John, you can only, I believe, it turn it clockwise. <laughs> so all the counterclockwise work I put in is essentially worthless. And at the same time, for the sake of this trap, you don't want this to be too wide.
I'm doing now is kind of widening it a little bit just so that it doesn't pinch the chain and pop it. You'll see what I mean right now. Okay. So if you see, I dug a little trench all the way across the, uh, the chamber. And what that does is when it bites the dog tag like that. So now if this is in the lock and you're trying to press up. Yeah, I got to make it deeper. But if you could see, well, even that way, it's starting to, even gravity is pulling it down. So as it gets pulled into the crevices on the sides. So that's really where the trap came in. Like where uh, on Bosnia and Bill, where Dark Arts one got locked was exactly in this chamber. Uh, the top part got stuck. It was a regular spool, not a dog tag. But um, the top part of the spool got stuck in the Bible and the bottom part got stuck in the slot. So off camera, Bill had to, you know, beat it and then the thing fell out and Bill went back on camera and explained it. And Dark Arts was cool. I was in touch with him when I was first trying to figure out how this works. Because, again, Bill doesn't uh, untrap it on camera. And he was super cool with reaching back to me and uh, explaining to me that it wasn't really meant to trap like that that it you know it was you know meant to slow you down but not meant to lock the lock you know make it un unusual yes i'm trying to prevent some casualties if i can <laughs> but now you know that's also the fun of it though man at least for me is the experimenting you know what i mean that that's the fun of it all right again a little ear warning I see how I'm doing. <clears throat> oh, yeah, my plugs look ugly as hell. They're the horribly chewed by the time I'm done. Absolutely. <laughs> Pins floating all over the place because they don't hold the steady. All right, see, now I'm getting a much better bite. I mean, the deeper you go, obviously, the better bite you're going to get. So look at that, that grabs really well, really well. See, so it has a good vertical access. Like you can see that it's in line. But yet at the same time, when you try to pick it and you're turning the core, the way it just sticks in there, it's very like that. It's very unique. Like I don't think I could do that uh you know with a standard spool i mean that, that's literally trapped like right there i you know, don't have to dislodge that there you go but, i mean if that was under tension that's you would have had to restart the picking of the lock because it would have been stuck right there okay let's see i want to look there should be i know it's dull but it just cuts better. I want to see if I have my pointed one right here. <clears throat> it just makes a little wider of a, or wider, backwards. It makes a little narrower of a groove. So there we go. Okay, I'll show you the difference in a moment. <clears throat> it's just losing all the sandpaper here. Okay, so that was the one I was just using, and this is the one I'm about to use. So it's a little easier to get a, well, now that the trench is already dug, 
it's able to sharpen up those uh, fine points to really make the dog tag catch. So again, still working right here on chamber number seven. And really, you don't want to keep it sharp because then it will pinch off the dog tag chain. So you gotta dig a wide enough trench that's smooth enough. You know, you gotta make sure with the Dremel, that's kind of why I'm going with this uh, absolutely pointed one. Just because the way it smooths it, I said the one unfortunate I sent to John. Uh, the ball had snapped under pressure, you know, or the chain rather had snapped under pressure. So that was the first challenge lock I had made. Maybe I didn't smooth it out enough, but just seeing how my lock did it, it was like, whoa! Like, my lock did such a good job. Now, what I'm doing here actually is I'm widening the hole. So I mean, it looks like I'm chewing it with my teeth, but. First, I'm digging digging the trench with the wide one, and now I'm actually making sure that the chain doesn't snap. I'm just kind of sanding this part out. Oh yeah, no, the Bible mod, the whole other thing, man. That's... I'm waiting. I gotta get some. Probably three, three millimeter rod just because I, I need to deal with the easiest to make homemade pins just so for uh, Lock Pickers United I can make my first, you know, kind of from scratch challenge and have to homemade pins in the hole for my, for my uh, what's that green belt? <laughs> Alright, that's actually looking really good. Here, let's give it another try with the. Um, Dog tag. Yeah, baby. See, so I know it falls with gravity, but let's see if it'll fall all the way. Okay. If you can see how it's falling into that trench. And now if you were rotating this clockwise, it would be falling into that. Not only is it counter milled, but I mean, you literally have a trench that you're fighting against. So again, I'm going to dig that a little deeper. Because I mean, when I really get it, uh, well, you'll see. <laughs> when I really get it good, it, it, it's such a hard trap that anything beyond medium tension it's just gonna get kind of stuck in that that trench and i mean that's what kind of the part that makes it the challenge right <laughs> i'm trying to make sure you guys can at least see something i'm doing on camera and i stay kind of looking over the camera to work I don't trust the camera too much. Kind of has that same thing like a car. I mean, and things in rear view may be closer than they appear approach. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you can see how nice and deep that's getting. And you can see where the chain slips beyond the counter milling. Here, let me turn this off so I can give you a little better example. So the ball, when pulled, the chain's going to slide off to, you know, left or right side. So it makes it damn near impossible to... Once you get it trapped, it 
as you're turning that, that just gets deeper and deeper the harder you push. And normally, most people, they get angry when the lock's not opening or they feel like they don't know what's going on. So the angrier you get, the more inclined people go to, you know, more tension, harder push, you know, harder picking, more tension, harder picking. So the more frustrated you get, the more my lock is winning. <laughs> However, my hat's off. We want to talk about the most frustrating lock in the world. That goes to the not ginger. No, the not ginger's lock with the it's on my channel that I when I had it open. Oh man, this thing got metal blocking every way that you can hold it to access the actual like, you know, keyhole and that, I mean that's the not ginger to me takes the cake for uh most annoying challenge lock or challenge lock made, you know, with annoying in mind that wow dude he's six over succeeded on that one oh ginger oh, i was talking about the uh the challenge lock that i had of yours with the um oh man with the metal on the outside with the with the, the padlock man come on um brain fart <laughs> what did you do uh I was talking about making uh, challenge locks annoying. And I was saying the, the king of uh, annoying, meaning like you win through frustration, is without a doubt. <laughs> Here, hold on. I have it somewhere. Hold on. Here we are. I can't not show it. He's here. I can't not show it. This guy. You want to talk about winning by frustration. That's how this lock wins. You've got to hold this somehow over here. I got it. But I mean, you got to keep that clasped up here while under tension, while trying to pick. And everything that's on this, I mean, everything from the chain to the everything on here is meant to frustrate you. And the more frustrated you get, the more this lock does not get open. Like, that's the secret, at least to me, to this lock. Yes, the Aster lock. Thank you. I didn't want to. Oh, it's right on the front. <laughs> I knew it was written on the paper, but this paper is getting very fragile. And I didn't want to take it apart to, yes, the Aster lock. Oh, man, this thing. You want to talk about frustrating. Shit. <laughs> So in that same vein of frustrating, you know, the more aggravated you get, the more you lose. That works with the whole dog tag thing. So the more angry you get, the harder you tension the lock or the harder you press with your pick going up, that thing just stays locked in place. Yeah, Ginger, I'm actually sending it to my lock along with the Johnny Cash one. Uh, I wanted to send them overseas for those guys to get their hands on them. As I've, I've been sick the last month, and then I had a death in my family, so I haven't had much time to really get into things. I'm just getting back to it, but my that's going to my lock. I mean, it's <clears throat> going to do a little European tour. So I figure that and then the Johnny Cash one along with the uh, American lock. That was all the things that was going to my lock. I got three packages I got to send out. Legless, um, my locks, and then um, Joe Picks, obviously. Okay. I'm going to go back, dig it in there a little bit. So again, a little warning on the ears. <clears throat> Yeah, well, if you look at the 
the Astrolog, man, that thing's impossible to change. And I'll show you it again in a second. There's just uh, a couple things, not only blocking it, but, I mean, the way you have to hold it in order to make the keyway even open or, uh, you know, accessible. That's half the battle right there, honestly. Okay. I don't think there's too much more I can really do as far as making sure the chain doesn't pop. That's nice and smooth. Nice deep groove. Is it really? Are you being honest or is that being facetious picking it upside down? Tried a fall like that. But honest, okay, yeah, I never tried it upside down. So for me, I'm jingling, jangling all those things out of the way with my hand just to <laughs> just to fight it. Yeah, I guess so. If you want to use gravity for your side instead of against it. <laughs> yeah, you know that's here's actually a lesson that I learned and um the first uh, one I made for John Locke, I actually had to change key biddings. Um, the first one was flat like the one I'm using, and I over counter milled. I made it so wide that um, the key pin, every time I pulled the key pin out, it would flip and turn. So it literally was almost like unusable slash like it would lock up. So I had to... I just swapped out the pinnings and luckily a longer key pin was able to stay stable in the core, you know, in the chamber. But yeah, I, that was my first mistake is doing this freehand. I made it too wide with a very short key pin and it just turned and, uh, and stuck. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I need to get my hands on one of those saws. I'm probably going to order one off of eBay. I saw a couple of, uh, I guess they're called like jeweler saws or whatever, for cutting the, the key pins or, you know, cutting the, the brass rod for key pins or for cutting uh, cuts like this. I believe it's called a jeweler saw. Or I think it might have been Jay Gabriel just had it on, uh, typed it in. I'm not sure. I can't touch the screen right now okay they are jeweler saws then okay <clears throat> yeah man between me being sick and uh like i said out of death in my family it's unfortunate I, i've been watching everybody's giveaways and you know i've been just throwing comments in here and there but i haven't really been feeling up to <clears throat> making videos and Really, just I just haven't even participated in giveaways. And like, if it didn't pop up in my YouTube feed, I didn't go searching for it like I normally would. Yeah, so that's nice and deep. I'm going to play it safe for now. I think that's decent. I'm going to go down and start the counter milling on five. And then I'll see how together both of those play out. And then before seeing if I need to cut any uh, any more. Hold on, let me see. I just want to make sure between the, the serrated ones I'm forced to use from pack lock and the spools that I keep my core stable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and okay the serrated one will have to be the stabilizer i've seen locks or uh you know like bosley and bill or something where every single pin has been spooled or something so literally the whole lock core is just like loose like that because there's no like solid brass pin that's actually holding it you know still actually i want to say the, the name of the video was jaws 
I want to say that was the one that I learned that from Jaws. And he literally like cut cut off like the whole top of the the thing almost. Like the whole top of the core. Alright, let's see. I'm gonna do I'm gonna put this in its holder for a second. <clears throat> But yeah, again, you know, anybody that wants free stickers, I got the, just email me at the locks for Knox, and I got the stickers made for the whole Halloween October event that I didn't really get to, to go with, but uh, yeah, if you want them, just ask, they're free, you know, I'll ship them anywhere, it's not a problem. Unfortunately, I can't do the chips, though, the chips turn out to be a package once the chips included and that's like 40 something bucks once it leaves the country so that's unfortunate i can't just give out the chips but stickers no problem yeah i need to, to mess around with pinning a little more I mean, for me, this is really kind of like where I have my fun, the creative part of it and the making the puzzle. You know what I mean? I mean, of course, you know, people try to pick it later is the other half of it. But and just messing around and seeing what pins are going to fit into what places and what difficulty it decides to become kind of. Alright, so now I'm going to start working on chamber four. We're doing the same exact little mod that I just did on seven. Uh, I'm probably going to do it a little faster, just using the um, the sharp one this, this time. sure you smooth these out any sharp edges will pinch that uh, dog tag chain and snap it right in half so you really want to make sure you kind of smooth out the uh, the chamber where it's going to meet the trap <clears throat> bite we got going there. Okay. It's coming. It's coming. So you know what, for this one I could tell already it's not grabbing the ball quite as I would like. 
<clears throat> so I'm going to switch back to the uh, to the round one for a minute to do a little of the deeper round removal. As soon as I can get this off, hold on. Let's see, I'm going to go back to this uh, round shaped one. It kind of resembles the drill bit. I'm going to do a little deeper counter milling. It doesn't feel like it's grabbing the ball quite as, uh, as good as it could. And that's kind of the whole thing behind this is grabbing the ball and then keeping it in that trench and keeping it from being picked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in with the round one right in here and just widen that hole and add a little better of a lip for it to get snagged on. And when I do these, I tend to go instead of like a, uh, before you heard me grinding, I was going at full speed. I only go at about half speed or uh, two out of three on this one just because counter milling can go so long so fast. And you take away a lot of material accidentally. And I just make a little lip where the ball goes under, so you know, it's completely submerged. Just a small rotation. And I push a little extra hard to the left, and a little extra hard to the right. little pocket where that ball's gonna fit. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I've made that a little wider now. I'm gonna switch tips, go back in with the pointed. And hopefully when I give it the test it'll grab properly and really uh do what it's meant to do. Yeah, that looks better. So you can see how wide 7 is. So that looks better. I try to keep it as tight as possible because you don't want the ball, you know, flopping out either. But uh, I think this one's coming out a little better than the first. Okay, just again, just making sure that that is not sharp. You do not want a sharp edge as that's turning. for dust. Okay, fits in all the way nice. Yeah, see that one's even more snug than the, the seven hole. Okay. Uh-oh, Joe, you may be in trouble, pal. <laughs> Okay, now if you can see, I'm trying to cut out my background there. The way that that grabs, so now you have one grabbing in this chamber, right? Like I'm pulling hard, man. Like that's, I don't want to pop this Ooh, chain. Shit. Okay. Now that's one chamber. 
here's another chamber. So you're going to have two of these grabbing onto the Bible and the core. Here, I'll uh, grab the second one. So we'll put both of those in there. I mean, you could see the idea is that top ball rests inside the Bible. So that top, that part's in the top. You're turning it, trying to pick it, and you're stuck in a trench. It's very, <laughs> I use this because it, it's very hard for me to pick. I mean, this is what stumped me the most. So that's, you know, what I'm putting out there. But yeah, that one's better bite than the first one I made. Okay. Maybe I over counter milled the uh, hole for the seven. That could honestly be why it's a little loose. Now let's see how the serrated pack lock standard serrated. Okay. Let's see how that catches with the. Well, it goes in good. Now let's see with the key. Oh yeah, that does not want to come out. Well, that's good. I'm saying the serrate, the serrations are catching. Okay. I wish I had something more, you know, with longer serrations. These literally, the standard pack lock just have, you can see it's just too little. Yeah. There you go. That's a good little one, two, three. That's three little uh, threads on it. So, okay. That's enough to grab on these threads. Okay, so we got serrated serrated hmm i'm feeling like maybe number one should be another trap pin that's what i'm thinking yeah we don't want to make this too easy right so i'm gonna have to require cutting another piece of dog tag okay get my wire cutters let's see i know i got the dog tag chain here somewhere i just showed it all right, we're going to be right back. I need to get the cutter. Yeah, sorry, I had to grab a drink too while I was out there. Didn't realize it's going on two hours already. <clears throat> Officially brought to you by Kickstart. <laughs> okay. So here's my dog tag chains that I've been using. Now they say this is three millimeter, but in all actuality, it's 2.8. Uh, this is just something I ordered off of eBay. You now it's just a cheap dog tag chain. But uh, I just thought that was interesting that it came at 2.8 instead of three. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure, uh, I normally tend to use just a three ball length 
I'm just going to measure, you know, three down, snip it. Okay, so that's for chamber one. And while I'm snipping away, I might as well cut a couple extras just to have them. That's another I mean, in my giveaways, I try to give away random things that are useful in lock sporting, meaning like pick blanks or the windshield wiper inserts to make uh <clears throat> to make you know your own tools and your own things along the journey. You know, that's a big part of lock sporting. So that's why I try to give you you know anything from tweezers to mats to um to pick blanks the tensioners you know so you have your own thing in lock sport and make you know really making it my favorite thing to do in lock sporting right now in my thing is making the challenge locks yeah buddy So on top of that, if you wanted, for whatever reason, if you want dog tag chains for uh, any locks you wanted to make, obviously I'm snipping a bunch of them. Uh, again, if you're asking for stickers, I'm pretty sure I could slip a little three-notch thing in an envelope with the stickers and not get charged at the post office. <laughs> so, I mean, you want a couple stickers and a little chunk of dog tag chain for whatever reason, feel free to ask. And I had the idea, being I can cut these at different lengths, I was originally going to see about cutting them into key pins. So I was going to see, you know, I could either measure with the red card or with the, uh, with this guy here. And be like, all right, if the pin's that long or find a pin, that would equal, you know, whatever, three or four of the, uh, the dog tag balls. Cause that would really create a challenge from uh okay yeah right, i'll cut cut a couple more and we'll go back to the Yeah, um, probably about like three months ago, or actually maybe long early summer, uh, Southward had a big twenty five percent off, and uh, let's see, it was twenty five percent off, and then oh, it takes a, f a fair amount of time. You can see right now, I'm about to cross the two hour mark, and. Uh, you know, literally, I just drilled out the core and kind of took it apart. I'm maybe about the halfway point. So, I mean, I'm doing as slow as could be, though. You know, I'm having fun. This is my Sunday afternoon. You know what I mean? I'm just relaxing, chilling out. <laughs> uh, technically, hold on. Where's the jar? At? I thought these were ironic. Uh, hold on. Oh, here they are. These are, they're made by Mike Tyson's, or Mike Tyson's, uh, Mike Bites by Mike Tyson's, Black Raspberry THC 10 milligram Bites. And what's funny, I don't have any left, I'd show them to you, but they come shaped as an ear, and he has a bite out of it, so there's a bite out of the corner of an ear, like, that's what the gummy is. It was hysterical, I opened it, I was like, what? <laughs> so a man's made famous by biting someone yeah holy fields fucking ear and here he is decades later putting out gummies with a chunk of ear missing 
<laughs> yeah, I thought that was great. That was too. They charge a premium at my dispensary because it's you know Mike Tyson product, but I had to just get one just to try and just to say I got it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're talking about him on a Rogan podcast too. Okay, hey, hopefully good, right? <laughs> Not find out there's a bunch of pesticides and Mike's trying to save money or something. I'm sure most people are just celebrity endorsing it. I don't think Mike's sitting there with a bunch of, you know, warehouses full of flowers, squeezing products, you know. <laughs> I think it's just some guy came up with a plan, was like, hey, you know, it's so good, these bites with your name all over it. And then they just, you know, marketed the ear. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, I got you. Yeah, I think that's a brilliant marketing strategy. I mean, if you're going to have a little... You know, a little Mike Bites, what better marketing campaign is there than to have an ear with a little corner bit of I mean, from Mike Tyson, I thought that was brilliant. Yeah, so I, I, I live in Jersey, and uh, I seen Mike in Atlantic City. And just, I used to have, I have two autographs, actually. I have one from the No Way Was I There, the Tyson Holyfield fight. So the big bite fight. Uh, I have an autograph of that, and then I have one that I was at for um, uh, Tyson versus Stewart. It's a nice black thing, and they're, they're standing, like, back-to-back, -back, glove to glove. And, yeah, it's a super cool dude, man. Super cool dude. Uh, I guess that is, yeah, probably showing my age, because I was going to say I was... Uh, I think I was like 14 when I saw him. Uh, I was like 1989, something like that. Not a year. No, maybe 92. Somewhere in the late 80s, early 90s, right in there. No, I guess I had to. Hey, I'm trying to go over his career in my head now. All right. We <laughs> worry about Mike Tyson, man. <clears throat> wow, I really can't believe it's been two hours. Okay, dog tags away, snippers away. <clears throat> Man, I'm getting dehydrated. Yeah, the weather finally dropped here. It was holding way, way nice for... Oh, yeah, dude, sure. I can imagine eight hours. <clears throat> well, this has a lot of time to put in at one time. That's... I'm probably going to go about another half hour, hour, see where that goes, and then see who comes home. If I saw the house to myself, I'm running. <laughs> I'm going as long as I can. But if uh, people start coming home, I might have to unfortunately shut it down and do a part two or, uh, you know, weave them together somehow. But yeah, like I said, this is my Sunday afternoon, so I'm just in no rush. Oh, yeah, that is. That's ultimately interesting, like seeing how homemade pins and how they work in the chambers and just a little shaving of here can make a world of difference there. I love in a way it kind of reminds me of like, uh, I mean, I was never big into jigsaw puzzles. Uh, my grandfather kind of was. He's also a, a little bit into locks. So I guess in a puzzle kind of sense, <clears throat> that's what he was drawn to it in the sense that you kind of have a basic picture and then you got to kind of you know, feel your way through. Oh, yeah, you're going to get the wrong mods together and ruin the whole lock. Like, I mean, if you counter mill something and then put a serrated pin in it, I mean, it might catch the lip of it, but at the same time, it would almost... Or here's something I found interesting. I want to say nobody warned me about, but it's just that if you're doing serrating and you serrate the whole top and bottom, that's really pointless if the bottom key pin isn't serrated because really you're, you, you would just be trapping. I mean, the top pin, if it falls into the bottom, had enough room, maybe, but otherwise, I mean, to over serrate it, you would just, the top pin might never fall to the bottom. You know what I mean? Like if you had such tight ribs, 
it doesn't have room to fall through the chamber into the, the plug and then it's not engaged, it's, it's worthless. So, I mean, you, it's, you got to be careful with your mods and that your pins are actually engaged in the. Oh, no doubt, Ginger. Hey, dude, I appreciate you stopping by, man. I really do. I said, I'm getting back into the swing of it here. And uh, like I said, I'm creating this for Joe. I got to send this out. I got um, legless. I got to send things out to. And then I got my lock. I got to. I'm catching up. <laughs> getting there. Yeah, you know, key key bidding is something actually that I do have a little file kit around here uh, within arm's reach right behind that. And that's going to be probably my next thing. I have a bunch of like American lock and sledge and whatever uh, key blanks. I have the files. And then oh, what I started to bring up before, uh, at the beginning of the summer, um, South Door had a big 25% uh, off sale. And then I had a 10% first time uh, buyer's thing, so I got like 35% off. But what I got was this here is the complete uh, lab pin kit. So it's all in three millimeter. So I can only, you know, do like sledge, uh, quick set, that kind of anything, three millimeter. Uh, that, and then I got uh, C clips because I needed when I got this uh asa here it was in pieces and didn't have proper pins or even a c clip to hold it together so i got a box uh bag of those and then um for american locks i have just smaller pins and then um just things to springs you know, in case i lose extra springs weird dynamic cut the teeth with the chain Oh, okay. Yes, I might have to try that for cutting the chambers. I mean, really, I mean, this is my third, yeah, third practice lock I'm fully manipulating here. So, I mean, I, I was curious about the the diamond saw or the jeweler saw, whatever you want to call the the proper, uh, to me it looks like a little jigsaw, but the, the proper saw that you would have to be doing this. <clears throat> And yeah, you know, obviously it does come out with better work. Okay, so what was I? Oh yeah, counter milling. That's right. Okay, so we're gonna go one, four, seven. So I got one more trap pin and serrate these two chambers, assemble it, and we'll call it a challenge lock. Oh, duh. All right, I got a serrate and counter mill the Bible. Wow, I got a whole at least another hour to go. <laughs> yeah, I know. That, that, wow, I wish I would have seen that you were giving them away. Like I said, I just had a lot going on here, and I've not been uh, really tuned into lock sport or you know YouTube for that matter. Day late and a dollar short, man. <laughs> But that is something I love about this community, you know, in the sense that everyone's super generous in the sense of if they have a lock part or a pin something that's unique or whatever that they have multiple of. I mean, people have been very generous with me. I mean, I show, you know, pins that the Mac was nice enough to to donate. Uh, lock Sport Viking. Um, and lock, uh, Dark Art Lock Picking again with his time, you know, as far as just, you know, emailing me and explaining how this exact thing i'm doing here even works you know the proper way to make the trap without it be you know you could trap it and make it so the lock's worthless you know and that's what i didn't want to do i didn't want to ruin a lock i wanted to make a proper challenge so uh it was cool just to even talk to him just be like hey you know just make sure you don't dig that part out too deep and you know was never meant to lock like that to begin with so, I mean, everybody in the community has been super cool with, uh, you know, some advice. Sorry. Uh, you know, noise warning again. 
Yeah, you know, Jay, I haven't heard I haven't heard anything from him for a while too. You know, and I, I was wondering about that. Take it easy, Ginger. I wish, again, it's going to create another trap on the, the very first column there. Very first row. Thanks, Ginger, man. I appreciate it, bro. That's real life, you know. I said for for my channel personally, I hate that I feel I'm giving off the impression of like being flaky as far as announcing these uh giveaways, doing you know, whatever else, and all of a sudden I don't put up a video for two or three weeks. <clears throat> and between it's I've had problems with uh my throat. And then uh again I just had a family member pass. So I feel bad in the sense that, you know, I announce these things and then all of a sudden, you know, I don't want to say I don't know if I'm following through, but I'm just saying it's just taken a lot longer than I planned. And for a fledgling channel, you know, just still my first year getting into it, you know, I wouldn't, I don't want to build a rep. But, oh yeah, this guy talks, he's going to give away all types of shit and never shows up. <laughs> you know, I definitely don't want to be that guy. Okay, so we have counter milling on the first one. I'm going to do a test just to see how it grabs. Ah, oh, see, that grabs good already. Oh, hey, dude, if you're able to quit smoking fucking from it, then that's actually a good thing. Like, I mean, if, if something bad turned into, you know, you're able to turn it into a positive shit, that's great. Oh, that's a good bite right there. That's a good bite. All right. It's just the way it grabs that. That's what I want. That lip. That's a good one. Okay. Now I'm going to have to start digging the trench. <clears throat> You know what? Maybe I'll just do counter melon for that one. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, true. I do I do try to keep it lined up. I mean <clears throat> all right, let's see. One more test. If it grabs really good. Uh, see, yeah, when I, I over counter mill like that, it just, I don't know, like I said, the key, especially in the plug, the key pins end up just flopping around, and that that's no good. <laughs> like, literally blocks the lock, so to speak. Okay, those are all nice locks. Or traps, I should proper proper words. Nice trap. And that one, if it gets to the second one all the time, naturally. I just don't know how big the key pin is. And that would be even tighter without a without a trench. Hmm. Okay, well, while I'm deciding that, let's thread um, chambers five and six. Let's 
So again, I'm just using a three millimeter uh, threader. Self-centered. See, now these ones I try to be careful on and not go too deep only because I have that trap pin next to it. And I, I do a lot of digging, you know, a lot of counter milling in that. I just don't want the two chambers to touch, so I'm not going to go too deep. Ah, dental instruments. That's not a bad idea at all, actually. I used to go to Rutgers College and make vampire fangs for people on the weekends. And uh, basically, it's just using dental acrylic, and <laughs> you're shaping it to the person's tooth, and then shaving it down with a Dremel, and they snap right on your teeth. And it's crazy that people, I'd be sitting there drinking with them and whatever, and they'd let me just keep working on their teeth. And it's like, yeah, I've been drinking for five hours. It's like 3.30 in the morning, and I'm nowhere near a dentist. I'm a guy with a Dremel and you're letting me come at your teeth <laughs> let alone you're paying me a hundred dollars that's how much the set of fangs was like wow you're paying me a hundred dollars to come at your teeth little did I know if I would have done some damage I could have got sued or malpractice or whatever stupid ass laws I was actually breaking as a 20 year old kid but... Yeah, that was interesting time to work, make a vampire song. <laughs> Eight more, wow, dude, how many challenge blocks do you do? Eight more, I haven't made eight in my life, dude. <laughs> It's funny, uh, the guy that I uh, buy locks from, or one of the guys on eBay, um, here's his info if you're interested, uh, Pappy Strowell. Anyways, he makes all these awesome locks, challenge locks on multiple different levels. You can custom order whatever you want, you know, he can make it to your specs, and yet he doesn't pick locks. I, I found that interesting, that uh, 46 made, wow, dude. Wow, good job. <laughs> 46. But yeah, see, he works, uh, the card I showed you, that guy, Matt, he strictly just uh, makes the locks. He has no interest in picking them whatsoever. <laughs> so he just throws them together. I, I found that interesting, just in the sense I get it from a financial aspect. You know, if you're a locksmith and you're just creating these as a side hobby to your main job. I'm selling them on eBay. Totally get it. <laughs> but I really thought, you know, someone that sold locks that were challenge locks in particular would be lock sporting. But yeah, that, that card I showed you again. Uh, super cool dude. To me, I think very good prices on locks. Uh, where I'm at in Jersey, he's right in uh, Pennsylvania. So 
chipping very close for me. And again, I'm just smoothing out the edges. <laughs> oh, okay. They got a whole bunch of extra cores just hanging out then. I gotcha. Yeah, I literally have one euro. It's right here. <laughs> this is the only it came in that same lot that supposedly came with that Bosnian built one. But it's uh this is the only I like that it's called it has a Nox in there, a, a lock Nox. But this is the only oops. Oh, did not want to do that. But that's the only technically Euro cylinder I have. There you go. You can see the symbol. I don't know that symbol, but um, the key says lock Knox. It's only a little four pinner though. But you know, like Euros have in both sides. If you want to say eight pins in the whole total lock, you wouldn't be lying. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people uh, in Lock the Goose United for the uh, first challenge lock via Euro lock. I guess really it depends where you are and what locks you work with, or maybe they even seem to be easier to work on in the sense of uh, accessibility. But yeah, I'm almost done with this plug. It's going to start going to the Bible in a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, there you go. That's a key making project and a half right there. Yeah, I try to look for those on eBay too. If they have lots of like, you know, a lot of 10 locks without keys, you know, they happen to all particularly be something like sledges or something where I have key blanks and I have the pins that will fit. But they normally go up in auction pretty quick. Oh yeah, I remember he had a bunch of uh, Euro cylinders he was giving away for that one if I'm not mistaken. Okay, yeah, split so you can make two challenge locks, guys. Yeah, that's definitely the bonus of the Euro, is the two, you know, completely separate lock functions. Alright, let's give it a little test. I think we're almost done with the core mod here. And the only thing that I'm not looking forward to is normally after I make a video that you know is a two and a half hour long video it takes YouTube a long time before it's going to get posted and I guess that's you know they have to sort it on their end or filter it or whatever they do but whenever I live stream for more than 20 minutes it takes hours sometimes even days before it'll come up Gotcha. And you make that a little deeper. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. I notice different uploading times all the time. Okay, so one, four, and seven. But different varying. I mean, you could see how wide open seven is with the counter milling. And each one's getting a little tighter up into the front. So I guess depending how you pick, if you're going with hard tensioning, that seventh one's going to be a, a bad trap. If you're going with light tensioning because of how wide counter milled I did it that might actually be easier so really you know your level of tensioning is going to determine how hard this lock is 
Okay, so every chamber has been counter milled, trenched, or threaded. So that's the plug for now. Now let's see what we have with the Bible and making sure we line up everything proper. <clears throat> let's see. First, I'll just do the serrating. And that's, let me make sure this even fits all the way through here. Uh, what's the first chamber I'm going to serrate? That's two. Again, here's a little trick I learned or uh, cranky lock picker reminded me of. If you don't know which side you're working on or which side's the front of the lock, whichever side has this divot right here, that is where the, you know, the plug is going to rest. So that's the front of your lock. It's just in case you ever lose your bearings. That's the front. Okay, so the first chamber we're going to thread is going to be chamber two. So I just thread it straight through the bottom. So what that does, or why I do that, two reasons. <clears throat> One, when the lock's assembled, I can actually look at the bottom of the lock and still tell you what chambers have what tricks done to them. Meaning, I'll show you in a second. Here, and I'll show you what's happening on this side and how far I send it up. Okay, so just right now it's reaching that top center hole. And trust me when I tell you, you want to make sure you're on point. Everything's lined up. I mean, it is self-centering, so I mean, just make sure it's doing its job. Now you feel it biting into the top. You don't want to go too, too crazy. Just want to make sure your pins can move. Okay, that's good enough for me. I have one more. Okay. So now later when this lock is assembled and you're not able to see anything inside, you know, you're just holding it in your hand or kick cylinder style. I, mean, I could... Hold on, let me see if I can illustrate this with Kix's pick. Okay. On chamber two, and I can see with my naked eye, it's hard to show on camera. Anyways, you just see a little reaming of the hole as opposed to, there you go, that's, that's a little better. You just see it's a, it's been threaded as opposed to the ones next to it. My letters in the background are, you know, my camera's trying to auto-read. <clears throat> okay, so we got it serrated two. Now we got a serrated chamber three. And again, you just want to make sure you're level. I mean, it is self-centering, but you're the one that needs to be level with it. All right, right when you feel it touch again, you just want to make sure everything is lined up. You're not off center. You're not, you know, carving into the side of the lock. You're not ruining nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is, dude. Absolutely, <laughs> sneaking right through the bottom. Okay, that's a good four, four threads on the top, easy. Nope, <laughs> nope. See, that's what, uh, I have a quite a few kicks, actually, that I'm even giving away on my channel. These are, um, hold on, is this one? They're 
arrow AR1 keyways with Asa Abloy keys in there. Here you go. The key bidding is really what makes them hard. Like the bidding on these are crazy. But these are their arrow locks with the Asa Abloy keys. Oh, yeah, you don't want to go 180. All the pins will spill out the bottom. If that's what you're talking about. Yeah, no, you definitely don't. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just even these kick ones like that, you'd have to, like you said, go through the top. I'd have to peel that back. I'd have to go through the top to drill away. Where, for this core, as you see, I'm just sneaking up through the bottom. So I don't have to peel back the whole, you know, kick cylinder part. <clears throat> Okay, that feels nice and deep, fully threaded. Then we have chambers five and six. Oh, that was nice as Picksmith. My flashlight, let's see how it looks going down the barrel. Oh, oh my eye, I can see it looks good for the camera. I can't show it too, too good though. But yeah, they're, they're serrating just fine. And you could definitely see. Oh, that was another one that was kind of interesting. Uh, who had the video recently with the lighted light plug? I saw one of those Bosnian Bill had. I was like, oh, I got to find me one of those. And the Lincoln Bosnian's Bill thing had expired. But uh, I thought it was interesting. Sidewalls and cut the file. Copper strips. Weld, huh? Yeah, I've never used JB Weld for that. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so I need to do five and six. Yeah, sneaking through the bottom of these things definitely makes it a lot easier. A whole lot. Oh, yeah, the rattlesnake rabbit hole, dude, that's, that's so far beyond my, I want to say comprehension, meaning I understand how they make, meaning drilling out the middle of the rings and putting them on the post, and they're just beyond my capabilities, way beyond my capabilities. Okay, let's drill number six now. Yeah, that whole pin and pin, rattlesnake, pistons, any of the, wow, dude. Like, that, those amaze me. Like, the micro, you know, the micro scale that which you're, you're working on. Using a hammer, huh? Okay, let me make sure that all lines up. Right now, it's not.
Okay. Yeah, I have an idea that I'm going to make a, the Knox box. Since I already have the box. And I think I'm going to want to make my pressure lock ultimate challenge lock. <clears throat> I'm going to put that in the middle of it and then secure it with a 90A and then a 90A Pro kind of crisscrossed. And tap and die set. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Now, the last step, and we're getting close to putting this together. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to change my Dremel tip again to the round, uh, the round drilling one. I'm going to do the counter milling in the top. And then I believe we can close her up. Okay, that's the front, so I want to drill out one, four, and seven. Okay, here's another thing Bosnia Bill taught put your thing through first. Ah, oh, that makes sense, dude. That makes sense now you say it like that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, the tip that Bill gave in his challenge lock making is rather than turning my Dremel on, squeezing it through this hole, and then squeezing it through there, you just kind of have it already there, turn it on, and then, you know, just drill what you have to drill. So you see it's not all the way in. And again, I just buried the head under a little round head just into the cavity of the chamber. And I'm just going back and forth, but I only need a little bit more each time. And the idea is it's going to grab the ball down, or the, you know, the ball on the uh, dog tag thing, and it's going to hold it in place. So let's see, that was one, then chamber, two, three, four. And again, this is where that cheating comes in place a little bit. Only in the sense that I could see what chambers I'm working on through the bottom. So like I could see the threaded holes from the threading it. I could see the counter mill. bottom of this you can already see threaded 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 thread here I'm use <clears throat> so 
So this one's counter mill. This one's threaded. You can see the threading. See the threading. Counter mill. See the threading. See the threading. Counter mill. Then when you look actually down the lock. I can see. Let's see if I could demonstrate it well enough. There's a decent lip right here. Okay, this is a notched pick. And with that little tip, I can feel it's got a decent little... Now that's flicking out. That's a decent little lip or groove that that's flipping out of. So that's good. That's what I want. I want that little ball bearing to get caught in there. In fact, let's see how the ball bearing does in getting caught in there. <clears throat> Okay, that's got a good bite. You see, if I pull that left or I pull that right, it hugs on to that. Let's see, I hope I could show that clearly. Eek. Let's see how the seven hole does. Pretty good, not as good as the first. I mean, it bites, it does bite. Okay, now let's try hole four. Yeah, that one's decent. Okay. So, all the holes have been, or the whole Bible, every hole has been modified in some way. So, now comes the hardest part of it all, <laughs> the reassembly. <clears throat> You know what? Hold on. I'll take a second. Stretch my hands. Sip my drink. Let my vape real quick. I mean, even though it's only going to be hopefully a little five, ten minute thing of putting it together, it's not really something you can stop in the middle of. You know what I'm saying? Okay, just making sure I still had the house to myself. I heard my dog barking. I just wanted to make sure I didn't have to shut down filming before uh, I put it all together. <clears throat> Alright, grab another kickstart. <laughs> Oh yeah, I definitely, <laughs> I've learned that uh, trying to make John's challenge lock. That's when I tried reassembling it, did all the drilling of the mods, all the core mods, everything. On paper it looked great. And then right when I tried to assemble it, that's when I realized that key pin flip and locked the whole lock up.
Sorry, I wish I could play some music, but uh, the last time I played music, I actually got a flag from YouTube when I took the uh, the Johnny Cash lock. The Cash lock. Uh, I played um, <clears throat> uh, Folsom Prison Blues and Cocaine Blues in the background. I actually got a copyright thing from them. I say normally I would sit here listening to music anyways, and I mean for the you know for you guys, there's only so much to look at in the sense of if I'm not, you know, currently doing or even doing something that you already know how to do, there's not much to really entertain yourself. So for me, I would love to play music, but unfortunately, uh, you know, YouTube. That's not right. Okay. So the keys pins are out of order. Oh, hold on. Let me see what they look like with the key in. Yeah, okay. For some reason I thought that looked way shorter. Okay, I'm just putting one pin back at the Again, they almost do seem to be color-coded blue, purple, blue, purple, blue, purple. Okay. That is the core. Fully assembled with pins. Whoo, baby, now to get to the hard, hard part. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's, um, again, when I ordered them, I ordered these Noxtober locks at the, um, well, at first at the end of August, talked to him about it, but like, Ordered, ordered them the first uh, week of September. But over at Packlock, uh, they had problems in the re-king department. And they only had one person working or something to that effect. So they had the locks printed. But it was taken... Uh, it would have came faster if, you, if I would have went with a random pinned lock. As opposed to the order I had on a... If you order from Packlock, you had a secret menu. Where you know you can uh, pick the bidding that you'd like, so it would have went faster if I would have went with random. But like I said, I kind of ordered these with some type of intention, you know, not all of them pack lock or challenge locks, but so because I wanted them custom pinned, you know, it took me a little while. Okay, don't want to start. In the middle and work back, going back to the middle. Yeah. Let's see, let's work with number three, I suppose. Okay. So we're going this way. Yeah, that's right before the trap pin. So this way I'll have the plug follower in there and then I could just slide it down and cover it. Good idea. Okay, so we're starting with three. Okay, I'll make sure to put that in. Properly, so this way the uh, serrations go into the chamber, right? Mm. See, here's well, I was it a problem? My problem. 
I normally repin like this. Where that's going to and make sure the serrations are facing the right way here. That way that defeats their whole purpose. Okay. The only thing is, is by doing it the way I'm doing it here, is ultimately when I pull the plug follower through, I'm not going to have the same ease in pinning four, five, six, seven on the other side. You know what? I should do it with the flat side forward because it's going to be harder later. Okay, one pin in. Again, got to make sure the serrations are facing the right way. Mm -mm. That's how bad my eyes are. Hold on, there's a spool. There's the serrated, okay. And believe it or not, sometimes pushing those dog tag chains down could be a real pain in the ass, too. If I put it in the right way, but then when I pushed it down with the spring, it popped back up and flipped upside down in a hole. You don't want that. Okay, two pins in. This is the part in the video where you see Lock Noob and Bosnia Bill being like, my God, I wish I had a guy to reassemble all these locks for me. <laughs> I now totally understand that. Right? <laughs> I didn't understand it that, you know, that when I was just watching it before I started messing with locks, but now I understand it. You take it apart, you do whatever. <laughs> hey, God, can you come put this together for me? <laughs> okay, this is the first of the trap ones. Okay, and that rolled over nice. Oh, yeah, actually, here I have... Hold on. I have Zippo lighters. Oh, right here. You want to talk about a challenge? Try putting one of these things in there. I, I can't. Like, I cut it, and I got it. it. It wasn't... it. Well, I don't think it's worth it in a sense that... It's very solid. There's no like real spring to it when it's in the chamber. So I don't know if it would honestly, I, I guess it depends on what you're trying to do for it. But yeah, it's like a brick wall with these super springs. And again, this was the big, I mean, not, I, I said Zippo, I'm sorry. Uh, this is a Bic. 
that ain't got the big dick later. But yeah, those are super springs, man. Whew. If that combined with the ball bearings, yeah, that would be, especially if you cut the K pins to the ball bearings, so it was all just round on top of round pushing each other. Yeah, that would be <laughs> that'd be quite difficult. Oh, yeah, for sure, with the check pins. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, one, two. And three. Okay, three empty chambers. So it should be trap pin, serrated trap pin. Goodbye, D Max. Little ball bangs. Dog tag. Oh, actual super springs. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I was lucky enough to win uh, KLC's um, lock caddy. And. Um, Unfortunately, either they sent it to a wrong address or there was a shipping mix-up. And literally, I just got it. Uh, they were nice enough to send a second one. They were awesome. Like, it just came, like, last week or so. So I wanted to... I kind of owed them a shout-out. Uh, it was nice enough. And um, Kaylee was to make sure... Was the one I reached out or the one that responded to me and made sure I got that. So as tradition, we know. When people get something from KLC, they generally take a picture of it with their leashes and uh Oh yeah, yeah, you definitely don't want things leaping out from there, that's for sure. And what makes this particular uh endeavor hard is when you're putting the ball bearings like this and you're condensing them uh with the springs. It's real easy to put it in the chamber when you're holding it like that. But it's very difficult to then push down the top ball bearing. So you have to kind of grab it like that. And then, like you said, just kind of force it down, shove it with the follower. And hopefully it fights the spring enough that it'll go through. There you go. Kind of like that. Okay, two left. Uh, one serrated and one trapping. That looks like a spool. There we go, serrated. Yeah, I was really hoping to use uh, a little more of the homemade pin variety on this one. I thought I would get to use some of the rattlesnake pin, well, a rattlesnake pin I was willing to throw in here. And then, oh, and there's no way that's right. It fell down the first chamber. Okay. There we go. Okay, serrated pins correct.
Okay, only one pin left and we are done. And this is the hardest one of them all, believe it or not. Okay, grabbing it from the top. Ooh, there we go. What? Hold on. I'm caught on something. Mm. Yeah, that's smart. That's weird. It, it'll turn, but it won't go all the way through. Hmm. Interesting problem. Okay. Oh, fuck. Oh, this has to go through. Okay. I see now. The front of the plug has to go here. I was going to say, at least I could push the plug through and pull that out, but that's... I'm wondering if the ball bearings are just creating so much tension in there. Let's see, maybe it's just this end one, if I can get it better. Uh, let me see, okay, it does slide through after I take out that end one. So I think it's a matter of, I, I can see what the problem is already. Okay, there was a little um, barb sticking up from the cut. Okay, that makes sense. So it wasn't the ball, there was a little... A uh, piece of metal sticking up at, after it. Okay. Whew. There we go. <sighs> All right. Bible is pinned. Core is pinned. <clears throat> Dog is crying to go out. Family's coming home any minute. Time to get this thing assembled, right? It's only been three hours. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is the simplest thing when the springs go everywhere and a whole lot gets stuck. <laughs> Alrighty. <clears throat> hmm. I should probably be smart and use a shim with these mods, but at the same time. Yeah, you know what? It's better just to be safe. I was just going to slam it through, but 
looking at the indentations of that retainer on the back of that with my luck one of those ball bearings will slip out right into there and seize the whole lock up and being i made it this far well let's not do that right <laughs> Oh, this is going to be a challenging feed on its own. Getting this through. There we go. Okay. One, two, three. Press, though. Okay. We have a functional lock. And I gotta put the C-clip on there, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And you can't send a challenge lock out into the universe without at least trying to figure yourself, right? <laughs> In time I could hear the family coming home. Ooh, that's a crunchy key. Oh boy, is that a crunchy key. Alright, that definitely work. I'll, I'll close the door. Sorry about that. That was Ruby Dogs. Yeah, that's a very tight key, Jay. That is very. Like, I gotta pinch that from the middle to really get that out. Like, there's a lot of crunching to that. It actually goes in pretty good. It's more on the on the coming out through the problem. I just did that. No way. I just did that. <laughs> okay. <sighs> that was so close. If I didn't spin that back around that little tiny bit, I thought I was so beat. Well, I was so beat. Uh-uh. Oh no, did something move out of the way? Tell me something moved out of the chamber. Uh oh. Okay. Oh no, no, yeah, I got the clip on. The problem is I did, I went 180. And I think one of the pins either slipped or one of the ball bearings popped into the thing and now it's not moving so my dog in the background distracted me and i got family here all right <clears throat> i'm gonna solve this problem on my own you saw you saw it put together i'll splice it together at the end when i present the lock itself in its completion when it's about to be uh shipped to joe uh jay i appreciate you hanging with me uh yeah, Joe. <laughs> I just got to put whatever pin fell out and 
whatever order there. I'm going to do that literally right now, put it in a package, and I plan on sending that out. And then I'm going to do another video, assuming my house stays quiet for, for my locks. So, uh, yeah, that's exactly. I pop the C-clip off, and then I'll spin it and see what chambers either the key pin either fell out or i mean i don't see it right there but whatever I'll, I'll figure it out not the end of the world oh that's a good idea the picture of it in fact maybe even when i'm done with it or when i turn this off if youtube allows me, i might even look to see it the the arrangement on it that's a good idea taking the picture all right, guys, thanks for tuning in, and uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated with the lock, show you how it is, and again, if you want the free stickers, just uh, be sure to hit me at the locks for knocks at gmail, and again, as far as teachers, DMAC, Joe Picks, of course, COVID Instruments, uh, Lock Pickers United, John Lock, Mr. Lock Picker, uh, Lock Sport Viking, uh, the tools, bare bones, sparrows, kicks, Peterson's, multi picks, Jimmy Long's, <laughs> lock pick, uh, lower lock tools. Uh, so that's the teachers, the tools, and most of all, thank you. Later, Jay, and thank everybody else for tuning in. Much appreciated. Please